Not a ministry building this time, or a city centre intersection. In a bid to keep their three-month-old campaign fresh, the protest movement shifted its attention to the business interests of Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat and her family, blockading the headquarters of SC Asset, the Shinawat property arm. This follows successful pressure on the government savings bank earlier this week to withdraw an interbank loan it had offered to help with overdue payments to rice farmers. The government has been unable to raise the funds since it dissolved parliament last December. But this protest seems more symbol than substance. The shares of SC Asset have fallen this week, but there isn't much they can do to hurt a business linked to hotels, land and apartment blocks. This, though, is a more serious threat. A convoy of tractors heading into Bangkok. On board, farmers who've yet to be paid for their last rice crop. Most are from areas traditionally unsympathetic to the governing party. It still enjoys support from those in the north and northeast. But that could drop off thanks to a rice purchase scheme that's proved unsustainably expensive and corrupt. I've prepared all my supplies, said this woman. I can sleep here in my trailer. Wherever we have to go, I can stay and sleep. But the theatre on Bangkok streets is just that. The real pressure on the Prime Minister comes not from the antics of protest leader Suteb Turksaban, but from the courts, from notionally independent state bodies like the Election Commission, and most of all, from an unsympathetic army. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Bangkok.